take a front row seat as forward-thinking speakers open your eyes to the latest innovations in the maritime world and a fresh perspective. The future is now. Welcome to Rethink's Night Out. Did you know that in 2017, we had mapped 99% of the surface of Mars with six meter resolution? And you know what that means. That means we now know more about the surface of Mars than the seafloor here on Earth. As of June of this year, just 23.4% of our seafloor has been mapped. And that's at 100 meter resolution. The lines here indicate every known survey that's part of the Jebco World Map which operates under the auspices of the UN and the IHO. So why should you care? Well, the ocean drives global systems that ultimately make the Earth habitable for us. Oxygen, drinking water, much of our food and the climate are provided by and regulated by the sea. Not to mention, how do we navigate safely, where do we extract natural resources, and how do we route undersea cable for internet? You might ask, how have we been mapping the seafloor? Well, as recently as the 1940s, we've employed the timeless technique of lowering a rope with a lead weight into the water. Just like they did in 1555, just like Captain Cook, and just like you'll find on many current nautical charts. A lead line produces one measurement every once in a while, and its location may be off by more than 500 meters. In the 1940s, we began to use echo sounders, and about 25 years ago, the adoption of multi-beam sonars came into play, which could make a line directly below the vessel. You may be impressed to learn that as of this year, the US has finally mapped 52% of its waters, and that's only at 100 meter resolution, not even as good as our map of Mars. And the US leads the world in hydrographic survey, so it's clear we need something more. Seabed 2030 is a global effort that's endorsed by the UN and supported by the IHO to map our oceans. Five years ago, just 6% of the seafloor was known. Today, it's almost 24%. But most of that advance came from collecting past surveys, a one-time event. Very little came from new surveys. So it's clear that if we're going to rely on old techniques, it's going to take a really long time. But what if we use new technologies like crowdsourcing? Every yacht, every cruise ship, every echo sounder, everyone in the maritime community can play a role. The director of Seabed 2030 recently told me that many yacht captains don't realize that they can provide valuable contributions all without changing their daily activities. And for those with privacy concerns, the data can even be anonymized. The Yacht Club de Monaco recognizes the value that their members can contribute, and they've offered all of them a voyage recorder from yacht devices. This little memory stick plugs into your existing electronics and measures echo sounder depths for Seabed 2030. But relying on community contributions from echo sounders alone does have limitations in the form of metadata, those extra details about where is the sensor located that are not often well documented. Do you know where your echo sounder exactly is or the GPS antenna? Without those critical details, community contributions have reduced value. Far Sounders 3D forward-looking sonars have been designed specifically because so much of the world's oceans are poorly mapped especially in the exclusive locations where so many yachts venture. Far sounder sonars provide a real-time image ahead of the yacht out to 1,000 meters range and also produce a depth history map of where you've been, which can be shown in both the 3D display and as a chart overlay. Our depth history maps are a lot like the output of a survey sonar, but also have high-quality metadata. So the obvious next question is, how do we get this off the yacht and into the community for Seabed 2030? Well, Far Sounder is a member of the IHO's Crowdsource Bathymetry Working Group. 
and we collect depth measurements from our customers and submit them to the IHO and on to Seabed 2030. This isn't a commercial service we offer, we just want to help our customers contribute to the global community. All of the contributions to the IHO are made available for anyone to use at no charge, so hydrographic services can help plan where they're going to do their next survey, and scientists can use that data as inputs into their models. In one concrete example, the Canadian Hydrographic Service is looking to improve their charts with trusted community contributions for locations where they don't have official surveys. And last year, they released a new chart in the Northwest Passage, which includes depth measurements from one of Far Sounders' customers. In another example, we had five customers collecting data during their last Antarctic season. By continuing this effort from season to season, scientists could have a better understanding of what lies beneath the surface as the ice shelf changes. Sure, you could certainly add a survey sonar to a yacht, but if you already have the need for Far Sounder's real-time forward-looking capabilities, then you also get the ability to build the map without any additional equipment. Plus, Far Sounder equipment is easy to install on a variety of hull types, including ice class. Another obvious next step is to share this data across the fleet, whether that's a yacht and its support vessel or all the yachts under a single management company. This is a capability that we envision for the future that could also contribute to Seabed 2030's goal. So regardless of the future, I want to leave all of you with a challenge to the yachting community. Help us understand our oceans better so that one day we will know as much about the Earth as we do about Mars. And you can use whatever equipment you have on board, whether that's a far sounder sonar, a simple echo sounder, or even a lead line. Thank you very much.